What is more important to be successful in life, talent or luck? The ancient Roman philosopher Lucian Neo Seneca in the first century after Christ said that luck does not exist. It just exists the moment in which talent meets an opportunity. Several centuries later, during the Italian Renaissance, the philosopher and historian Niccolò Machiavelli judged that luck is the arbiter of half of our actions, but it lets us govern the other half. More recently, the statistician Nassim Nicholas Taleb tried to show in his best-selling book that we always tend to neglect the role of chance in our life and that very often luck matters more than talent. So, who is definitely right? Seneca or Taleb? What matters most? Talent or luck? We received the prize for a simple theoretical model which explored the role of talent and luck in getting success. The paper appeared in 2018 and was immediately noticed by the scientific community and also by popular newspapers like uh, Forbes, uh, uh, Sunday Times and, and many others and became uh, actually very, very popular. As any other human feature, also talent is normally distributed across a population. This means that talent is distributed as a Gaussian with a given average and uh, you may find more or less talented people and the difference in their talent stays always within a given standard deviation. We know that wealth is accumulated and distributed as a power law distribution and therefore we started in our model by asking how is it possible that a normally distributed variable ends up in a power law distributed result. The TVL model brings together three main ingredients, talent, luck and the so-called rich-get-richer effect in order to reproduce the dynamics that leads to success in our life. We simulate a population of 1,000 individuals or agents placed in fixed position in a virtual world and exposed to a certain number of randomly moving lucky events, represented by lucky green points, and accidents, represented by unlucky red points. Each individual has a given fixed talent, expressed by a real number between 0 and 1, randomly chosen within a Gaussian distribution, centered in 0.6. In our model, talent represents the probability of exploiting an incoming opportunity. The context in which we live every day is then the place in which we go and find the opportunities that we can try to exploit. And our ability to exploit them is of course proportional to what we have as a personal talent. Each individual has also an initial level of capital, representing success, which is set to 10 arbitrary units, equal for all the agents. We simulate 40 years of individual lifetime. Every six months, we check if some green or red point falls inside the narrow circle around a given agent. In this case, we applied two simple rules. An opportunity can be transformed by the agent into a doubling of his capital with a probability equal of his talent, thus simulating the rich get richer effect. An accident just produces a halving of the capital, regardless of talent. The first important result is that, even with these very simple dynamics at the end of the simulation, we are able to reproduce the Pareto law that is an asymmetric fat tailed power law distribution of capital with a great number of poor agents and only a small number of increasingly rich individuals. But the other interesting result is that talent and capital seem to be absolutely not correlated. In fact, the most successful individuals with a final capital of more than 500 units have a talent just around the mean, while the most talented individuals always end the simulation with a very small capital, close to zero units. So we find basically that individual talent is a strictly necessary feature to be a successful person. Unfortunately, the talent is not sufficient to get the final result. Success seems to be very correlated with luck, 
In fact, the most successful agents appear also to be the luckiest ones, those who met the highest number of opportunities during their life, while the less successful agents are also the most unlucky ones, presenting a great number of accidents. And in science, it's well known the phenomenon of serendipity. That means the scientist is looking for something uh, that he had in mind, but uh, he finds something else, completely unexpected. And this is uh, very important in science. For example, Fleming discovered in 1928 uh, penicillin because he left, uh, he forgot the windows of uh, his lab open. And when he came back, he found that some spores that uh, had entered from the windows contaminated uh, uh, his dishes and uh, he realized that they killed several uh, very important bacteria. Thus, the take-home message of our study is that even if, from a micro point of view, a talented individual has, by definition, a greater a priori probability to reach a high level of success than a moderately talented one, on the other end, from a macro point of view, the a posteriori probability to find moderately gifted but very lucky individuals at the top level of success results to be greater than that of finding very talented but unlucky ones. The context in which we live is responsible, is partly responsible of the success that we can accumulate in time, because it's the set of opportunities that we meet that can give us the chance to exploit them, just doing our best. We also explored several redistribution uh, strategies uh, in order to give uh, an initial capital to these uh, uh, agents that we simulated, in order to see which was the best strategy to let the most talented people to emerge. And we saw that actually uh, these are not what are uh, frequently used today. That, that means those that um, give awards and funds only to the top excellent uh, agents, because th those, according to our results, are only the, the luckiest one. And in fact, in order to uh, let emerge the most talented people, you need to redistribute resources periodically in a random way, if resources are limited, or in an egalitarian way. Likely, also due to our study, several funding agencies in the world, and in particular in Denmark, Germany, New Zealand, and also UK, as reported by a very interesting Nature editorial, are starting to fund uh, small research projects in a random way. It is correct that in our communities, we somehow try to repay the context where we live. That's the reason why the taxation on income is correct and, in a way, the progressive tax scheme is more correct. Because the opportunities that we have exploited must be somehow repaid and we have to give back to the system a part of what we have accumulated because this accumulation it is of course done by means of our talent but because by means of our talent we exploit the opportunities that we face. This is immediately evident when one thinks about some example. Think about uh, people in less developed countries they don't have a very wide set of opportunities and many of them cannot go out from their poverty because even if they are talented, they have not occasions to exploit. Looking at our results, one might think that, uh, okay, so luck is so important, then I stop doing things and I wait for uh, lucky events. This, is, of course, is not true. I mean, what... Uh, our study says is that you have to look for lucky opportunities. So you have to move to get out of your comfort zone, meet people, travel, and all in this way, you can uh, just uh, improve uh, the possibility to get lucky opportunities. In other words, uh, in order to win the lottery, you have to buy the tickets.